Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this, your Sagittarius August 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant. Great to see you and I hope you're doing well. Actually, I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one Clairvoyant readings for Sagittarians from different parts of the world over the course of the last month. And if you might be interested, just check out the information that's in the description below. Now, also, I've actually done a number of healings for many people over the last month since last I saw you as well. And the information about that is in the description. Now, healings are free. That's my sole contract with the, the absolute, with the source. So, why don't we get the uh, tarot reading underway for you? By the way, the subscribers, and it's great to great to see the subscribers. Uh, thank you for having me in your home. I really enjoy seeing you each month and and I enjoy your company and I look forward to seeing you. And do you know that um, there are no video advertisements that are going to break their way into this content and so you get to enjoy the experience directly. And that's good because you know that we only take, the subscribers know that we only take five cards because they don't, we just don't spend five seconds on each card. Rather the card for us and our readings, they come alive and they speak, don't they? And tell us what's in store for you. So why don't we get the process underway and see what there is for you, the lucky and highly talented and attractive Sagittarius. What's this? The Five of Coins. This is the Nine of Coins. Both on that top line there, fascinating, what? Let's have a look. <laughs> What's this? What would that be? The Ace, Ace of Swords, I imagine. You have to see what these things have to say in just one moment. Ten of Cups. Gee, I like the um, I like the paintings on on this deck. I must. Uh, there's two. I'll take the top one, shall I? And it is the Wheel of Fortune, which of course is Jupiter, your planet. So that's fantastic. Now, as is our usual practice, why don't you come now? Sit down here next to me, to me and let's have a good. I might use a pen and point out some of the interesting features of the card, but let's have a look at the imagery, the paintings on these cards together and watch them and listen to them as they speak and tell us what's in store while I do the reading for you. Right, let's have a look at this first card that you drew, which is telling me that maybe there is the something you've been worrying about and it's something that you have been worrying about for some time, but it seems to me that your worries are unfounded and in fact there is great luck and good fortune ahead of you and you'll wonder what you were ever worrying about in the first place. Let's have a look at this image that's here and here is a, a young man kissing the hand of a young lady. So, well, Mr. Winchester, I do declare you are very forward, sir, is what he may be saying. I think that theirs is a, uh, a secret affair. This is the chariot of Mars. Now, these are the coins here. This is the five of coins. This is talking about, and there's some instability with the five. There's an association with Mars. So sometimes the energy can be unstable. But this is talking to me about the instability and problems that can be caused by desire and violence. And they are set out in the four elements of the Tarot. Here we have fire, someone burning their hands in a fire. Here we have earth where there is buildings crumbling, presumably of an earthquake. This is air, things being blown away by the air, and here a building about to be swamped by a large wave. Now, what has the astrology got to say to me, seeing where it is at this time? And in this position above the Ten of Cups and opposite the Nine of Coins, it's Mercury ruling the first decan of Taurus. Well, Mercury is that very flighty, 
fast planet. It's closest to the sun, as you know, and it's weighed down by Taurus. Taurus is the fixed sign of Earth and symbolized by the plodding bull. So there is a sense of stagnation around you, I'd say, a sort of a brooding, a uh, some cares and troubles where your own energy might feel blocked. Your thoughts keep revolving around finding a solution, a way out, a breakthrough. It's coming. Or a situation touches the depths of your subconscious. It goes right through you sometimes when you worry. And you worry about things at night, don't you? Where it seems like there is a black hole where there's no way out, a sort of a hopelessness. And yet your inner self your soul, it's saying to you, it's telling you, come on, do something about it. Now, the problem in this situation is that you just remain sitting around doing nothing while at the same time tormenting yourself with your entangled thoughts. I think this has been going on for some time, really, hasn't it? And maybe you haven't dealt with it. You might be thinking to yourself, am I going to be getting myself into a situation or have I got myself into a situation that I might not be able to get out of? Will events overwhelm me? Well, worry is about past and future, neither of which we can do anything about. You do have to ask yourself this, if this was your last day on earth and you knew it, would you be using your remaining time to worry? You see, I think that the acceptance that we are worrying, that mentally we are worrying, that that acceptance is in reality the acceptance of your creator's perfection. Now, one of our biggest mistakes is to ignore what happens within us. There is no shame in letting your creator know that you are falling and that you need him to pick you up. The fall of the ego becomes the rise of the soul. Your soul wants to meet you. It wants to breathe. It wants to speak. It wants to see with the clarity of the eyes of your heart. These eyes of the heart are the eyes bestowed directly upon you by your creator to witness him and his pleasure. And the friends of the divine are not in search of their own eyes, they are in search of his eyes. So if you have a worry, give it over to the divine. And I guarantee you that within a day or two, the solution will present itself in the most unlikely way. Now, because you've drawn this card first, I think it says that you are ready to look at your situation as it is, and you now have the opportunity to free yourself by initiating the necessary discussion, either with partners or with yourself, because only open and clear communication will facilitate progress. Now, in what areas or situations are you not clear and decisive enough? With which people do you need to clarify things? Say this to yourself. I am ready to look at my life as it is and trust in the process of resolving my fears and I am straightening out my life. And then of course you do get the answer and things do resolve because what do we have here? We have an ace. This is interesting. What's going on in this painting here? Do you think, Nigel? Well, a great sword stands up against the sky. Now, it's crowned at its tip with a golden sort of a thing up here, like a golden crown type of thing. And, and also, these are the symbols of the, the suit of spades in, the, um, in playing cards. Do I have any around? Yes, that's... There's a spade there. Well, that's the same sort of a spade that's that's there, really, isn't it? And two wings are beside the tip of the blade. Now, the palms of secret martyrdom droop down from the crown, and red and blue flames shower down from the palms. 
and a snake with two heads. Can you see that? There's a snake with two heads there. And what else is there? there? At, the, at the hilt of the thing is the yin and yang symbol. And at the bottom, this is a, this is like the victory. Here she is, victory coming up here. And she's encircled by a laurel wreath. And it looks like a couple of characters from the Old Testament in that book of Genesis. Abel here kneels down on the right and looks like he's got a lamb with him in his arms and he's gazing upward and Cain on the other side of course on the left is holding the product of the earth and gazing downward. Now I think that Aquarius, Capricorn and Pisces are liable to be important to you at this time. I think what we have here is really finally for you brilliant powers of thought and almost a divine inspiration. I was talking about giving it to God. Quick fire thoughts and ideas that's going on here. Your present clarity is going to be a wonderful condition for your undertakings. You'll be able to recognize facts and call by name things which other people would prefer to sweep under the carpet. Now this means that there's a, going to be a great responsibility on your behalf. Be sure never to speak your insights heartlessly, but when you are fully in contact with love, use your sword sparingly, but without sparing yourself or others. I really do think that this is a moment of great insight and clarity for you. It signifies an aha moment. The things that you were worried about get resolved and the achievement of your goals now becomes much easier. You see, you've developed a new perspective on life that was previously unclear. So now you're able to get to the heart of the matter. You have gained a new vision and you can pursue opportunities which draw upon your creative and mental abilities. Now, what supports and what hinders your clarity? Say this to yourself. I now am in the position to trust my clear perceptions, to trust what I feel is right. Now the good news just gets even better because this is a turning point for you. And let's have a look. There is here the Wheel of Fortune. Now the wheel itself is made out of gold and it has the signs of the zodiac around it. It's being held up by, well here is the lady behind the wheel is blindfolded and her wings and hands touch the wheel in seven places. They refer to the six, uh, to the seven uh, planets that you can see. That is from the Sun, Mercury, Venus, uh, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. The other ones, of course, you can't see out, out, out in the back, out in the void. Now, what we have at the bottom here are two boats that are holding it up and they've got like snake heads there. Here is a blue man going up the scale and he's chasing a crown and here is a, a green man flying down in fire chasing a crown. He's about to enter into the sea of life where there is an old man struggling to stay afloat while the ruler of the wheel who's holding a sword and what might that be? A pen with a crown is overlooking everything and here is the blue behind it and that blue refers to life and a good future for you. Now why this is particularly good is now this is the Lord of the forces of life. Now why I like it for you is because it is Jupiter and Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion and good luck. Jupiter is also about wisdom 
and organizing things and making sure that they happen. So this is talking about a new prosperous beginning for you, expansion, creativity, a big breakthrough and unexpected fortune. There's luck and fortune all around here. There's a chance opportunity coming your way. That is something that just comes in from left field out of the blue. Now there are some ups and downs, of course, but this is also the opportunity here, I think, for a life-changing chance meeting. So I think that this is representing really for you an unexpected change in your life, unexpected, which is going to be favorable, but which may not necessarily seem that way at first. So be ready to act on any unexpected opportunities. Now, when times are good, stay centered in the center of the wheel. Then you don't get thrown into the sea on the way down. It doesn't matter which way the wheel is going. Change is about to happen. Now you may need to alter your present course or change things around to set the stage for the right outcomes to come into your life. And of course, if you struggle against the course of life, you become like this guy struggling against the wheel. So be in the center. Look, if no miracles are starting to happen, then something is wrong. You stand before the possibility of a great breakthrough. So use this moment. Are you really ready for the great fortune? What's standing in the way? Say to yourself, I am a prosperous individual. I am flexible in times of change. I enjoy manifesting internal abundance externally. Abundance, which created me, is what I am. And I am now ready for the miracle in my life. Now, what is the card that's sitting on top of that? That is this card here. Oh, I'm getting a lot of... See, this has got gain, material gain all around it for you. Things moving your way. No need to worry about things, you see. You worry about things. What you worry about never comes to happen, does it? Have you found that? That's certainly been my case. That's certainly been the case that I have. Well, here we have a... First of all, all these things here are goat's heads. So there's nothing particularly interesting about that. And there is a path winding through a garden. And at this end of it, there's a storm. Now, here, there's, now at, the, at the start of the path, a gold ring has been lost. This character is going, oh, what's that back there? This woman is also coming down this way. Maybe she's the one who's lost it. Whereas this person here has got their umbrella up, ready for the rain which is ahead. Now this is a good card and a good energy because what it's saying to me astrologically is it's Venus ruling the second decan of, of Virgo. Now, as you know, Venus is the lesser benefic. Jupiter, your planet, is the, the great benefic. This is the lesser benefic. And Venus is concerned with love and money, money and relationship and happiness. And these things are all expressions of your values, your pleasures, your tastes, and so on. And Venus is saying that if your heart is pure and you follow your heart, your life can only gain from this. And good fortune, which is with this wheel of fortune here as well, is going to attend your material affairs. So there is gain here and reward for your efforts and realizing your goals. Now you could well be on the way to some sort of a financial and personal security here, a self-sufficiency and projects, situations and relationships are going to magically come together and produce material gain. You will start moving ahead really here. Now this isn't wealth, but it's moving you along. And when you look back in 12 months time, you're going to look at this period and you'll say, I remember this because it's a time with Venus in Virgo. It's a time of growth, of gain, of loving bonds. And remember, the more that you give, the more that you receive. So I suggest that there are going to be general improvements in all the areas of your life because for me 
coins, the suit of earth is very broad. There could well be a settlement of aggravating issues. There's some, maybe of receiving a financial gift and you'll have good luck and good management in financial affairs here. Do you know that the highest task in your life, the highest task that is set for you is to realize yourself, to know who you are. Now this happens in carrying out the special tasks that are assigned to each of us during the course of our lives and retreating from your life's tasks out of fear or a desire to remain comfortable means denying yourself, denying your soul self, breaching your soul contract. Gain comes from giving willingly and lovingly. Now, giving in this sense means also giving yourself to the universe, giving yourself fully to life. The cosmic law of wealth is thereby fulfilled. The more I give, the more I receive. Now, if your knowledge and creativity are filled with love, you will gain from all the situations in life. The more deeply you are engaged, the more comprehensive your insight, your insights are going to be. Now, do you know what is the highest goal in your life? Say it in one sentence, write it, know what it is, and check carefully whether that which you call gain is in full harmony with your ultimate goal. But nevertheless, say this, everything that happens today serves my growth. The more I give, the more I receive. And then that takes us finally, I think, I think it's finally, isn't it? To, oh, see, here's another tremendous thing happening for you. Great beautiful relationships going on here. What's going on in the painting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cups are there. And this is 10th cup. The 10th cup is, allow, is the entrance, which allows you to get across this moat and into the town, which is under construction. So it's obviously quite a well-to-do and Wealthy town, there's lots of construction going on. The central thing here looks like a temple with a fountain at the top. And there is a young man and a woman who, but if you're lesbian or gay audience can just make the necessary adjustment. It doesn't change the meaning. Are married and, uh, and enjoying each other's company. It really is a picture of, of wealth and fulfillment. Now, what is interesting about it is that I'm just looking to see where the card is placed. And because it's there, it says to me, Mars ruling the third decan of Pisces. Now, that's about the 9th to the 19th of March. Now, Mars rules, uh, well, Jupiter, your planet, rules Pisces as well, you know. So what's Mars going to do in Pisces? Well, you might think that Mars is a problem in Pisces, but Mars actually has a softer side. Mars is, or, now Pisces is a feminine sign. Mars is also the ruler of Scorpio, which is a feminine sign. And Mars can be very good at, at the energy, the effort, the aggression used to protect the young, to protect what is important, to protect family, to protect what values are there. And so that sort of energy that's there is one which I think is going to be one that's ensuring that you have satisfaction because you would think that Mars is disruptive and would conflict with peaceful Pisces, but I don't think it does. You get fulfillment and this is going to radiate out from around you. So there is emotional stability here and your dreams are going to become a reality. Now, there is a great deal of emotional passion here, sexuality and vitality. But this is a 10, and this is Earth, and so it's transient. It's about to devolve into the ace of the next suit, which is going to be the ace of swords, as a matter of fact. See, they're all connected, aren't they, these cards? So what we have here is, I think, that 
There's a happiness here which, because of Mars, is there that you might get a short-lived happiness as a result of consumer things, where you really thought that you wanted to obtain something and then you got it and you said, oh, why did I do that? Or you may have said, I wanted to get my hair coloured like this, why did I do that? Or I wanted a, a particular style of hair, why did I get that cut? Why did I get these shoes? Why did I get that phone? Why did I get that game? You think they're going to make you happy, but then you get bored and you want to move on to the next thing. Now, sometimes in a relationship, it can mean with Mars around, just around, it can mean that. See, it's very productive, Mars in Pisces, I think. But it, it, it does highlight that there could be, uh, with a relationship, a loss of pleasure that the relationship brings and you have to do something to fix it up. Now, if you can imagine this cup here, and if it were to have a, for, sitting underneath a faucet and water coming into it, water is your motion, and then the water starts to spill over the edges, that's a loss of pleasure. So you need to do something. You either need to move on to another cup, which I don't recommend, or what you need to do is you need to rejig the dynamic of the relationship that is to make the cup bigger so that you can hold it to change the the not the rules but to change the dynamic of the relationship in order to ensure that there is a uh, a, a, a way in which you you do now feel satisfied it's not that you're not happy but it's that you're full and so you maybe you're thinking oh have i come to the end of of what something has to offer. But look, this is saying to let things develop by themselves because everything always comes to you at the right moment, doesn't it? Now, what does a fullness of relationship mean to you in this situation? And say this, life gives me all that I need to be happy because you of all people are living proof of that. Well, what a fascinating spread of cards for you. Good job, you. I really must say that that was a very interesting set of information provided uh, by the cards for you this month, don't you think? And doesn't it look like it's going to be a fantastic month for you? And you deserve it, I think, don't you? Now, do me the favor, would you, if you did like the video, please press the like button on your way out. It helps the YouTube computer thing, uh, promote uh, the channel, and, and that's the only favour I ever ask of you, so uh, thanks if you do, do that, and I'll see you again next month. Now, but remember this though, until I do do that, that you are a legend, and I do look forward to seeing you again next month, and until then, it's bye for now.